you guys welcome back to what should be the final episode, finally, <laughs> of Cells in the Fog. <laughs> I thought it was going to be last time, but they popped two more episodes on us, so let's finally do it. Let's just, this is going to be it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. It says the battle seems lost, but there's a small chance to save the day. Oh, okay, so we have some craziness last time, and basically what's happening right now is just the culmination of all of our choices throughout all of the five seasons. Um, so basically that's what we got. Um, yeah, I definitely gonna do a replay um, so that I can get some of those like really expensive diplomacy and strength options to see what happens there. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna keep going on like everything that I'm done. I'm just gonna, I've done that. I'm just gonna let it see what happens when you do it the way that I played it. Um, but here we go. I, I, I just start paying attention because you know how the battle scenes go. Anything that pops up, I need to be looking and paying attention to how to defeat it. So, okay. Chapter 13, The Last Chance. Uh, they had nearly escaped when the monstrous uh, demoness appeared on deck. Bah. That must be one of those ugly freaks that was, that, hideous, that was with that hideous devil. If you ask me, she isn't so ugly at all. Is there a reason that only ladies twice your size catch your eye? <laughs> Oh gosh. Whoa, lady. Take it easy. That's not what I meant. Don't you dare leave them alone. Um. Don't you dare? Mystery twirled her cycle pan sword through the air. I forgot her name is Mystery. That's right. So quickly that it was a just translucent blur, dashing any thoughts of fighting her from their minds. She undertook Davy Jones's order with a single-minded focus. The demoness would crush anything standing between her and stopping the crew's escape. If this thing goes wild. Our rigging is done for. Looks like she could chop the ship in half. Oh, uh, do not hurt my ship. Seeking to protect his master, the brave little lemur charged the demoness. Do not kill my lemur. She raised her sword and slashed at the newcomer. But the swift little creature ran right up her blade and threw himself on her visor, blocking her view. It was a coordinated strategy of distraction and attack. Maybe he can absorb her magic? A sizable chunk of her mighty blade vanished behind that dog's teeth. I don't even know what's happening. Mister was still collecting herself as the animals scattered. Woo! The pet's attack weakened the monster. Oh. Oh my god. You're both my favorite. <laughs> Make a great team. <laughs> um, I'd say they make a great team. Yet again, the monstrous woman prepared to shred anything standing in her way. Not so fast. I thought, first I thought it was like magical binding around her, but then I realized those are her tarot cards. What? She must do some work? The Signorina uh, burst unexpectedly onto the deck, her loyal cards floating around her. I thought a lot about what you told me, Adelaide. It's time I finally appreciated my own worth. Yeah, that's right. These 79 cards have been my friends for as long as I can remember. And now it's time for us to work together. The demoness raised her sword again. But the suit of coins, sometimes known as the shields, formed a wall that stopped her strike. Surprised? To be honest, I am too. But let's go on. Cards from the suit of swords sliced through the air, cutting the monster like a paper doll. <laughs> what? Whoa! Holy crap, dude, she's doing work. Lorenzo's magic kept mystery at bay. That's dope. Phew. Who knew magic would be so draining, uh, Adelaide? <laughs> Despite the toll of using magic, the noble woman kept fighting, using the full power of her deck. You... Finally believing yourself are a sorceress now. Finally believing yourself? Thanks to you. Hurry, we must leave. I agree, but how? Just like the other gods, listen to the universe and go to those who worship you. Their faith is your power. Focus that power so that you can jump into the world, and I'll guide you. I don't think anyone prays to me. I don't have priests like the, the Padre, after all. 
They don't have to pray. They can believe in you. Use your actions as a moral compass and dedicate their deeds to you. Well, how many people see your actions as an example? How many aspire to be your equal? Adelaide considered for a moment and began searching for those feelings. Adelaide was... Not widely known, fairly well known, a legend of the seas. They're not telling me, showing me exactly how much I have. So I'm assuming I have enough. I don't remember what was the last time I wrote down my, uh, where I was with like trade points. Last time I checked, my rep was like 58. And I don't think that would do this. Well, shouldn't it be grayed out if I can't? Yeah, I don't have enough. I'm like, I have two less than what I need. Oh my God. That's crazy. These skill points you need are like crazy. Wow. I'm too low. That sucks. <laughs> oh well. Fairly well known. I'll just have to see what happens. Um, yeah, once again, I gotta replay so I can figure out how all that works. Yeah, so I can write that down in the wiki. I didn't think I was so important to people's lives. During her voyages, Adelaide left a lasting impression on many hearts, becoming an example for a whole generation. Adelaide received considerable power from those who remembered her. In her imp impotent rage, the demoness raised her arm for the final blow. Come on! Whoa, I've never seen her make that face. Let's get back to our world, away from the edge. Um... I don't think these choices actually matter for what you say. Maybe, I'm not sure. She rushed for the border, separating the, the worlds in a frantic dash. We're back here. She left behind Zia Baba, who was crushing Paradox's slippery tentacles. She bid a silent farewell to Katrina as she hacked away at monstrous mouths with her sickles. She stretched her soul toward the sea and sun, where the ancient altar awaited her, the place where she could finally end the curse. What is wrong with her? You did it, just as I said you would. What's wrong? A silly thing happened. She was aiming for you, but I was bringing up the rear and got in the way. <gasps> You'll recover, surely. No, I won't. She killed me. This sucks, dude. You know, Monta, I thought his, I thought it would be like the reverse. Like if you were, Roman, had been romancing Monta the whole time, then you would end up, uh, the mermaid would be the one who died instead of Manta, but no, it, it's no matter what, even if you're on the dark magic path, Manta dies there. And it seems like the mermaid's death is something you can't avoid either. She killed me. I don't even know what to say. <sighs> Alas, this is my fate. Soon I'll turn into sea foam. Oh no. Just like the original Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid tale. But we have just enough time for me to lead you to the sacred island where this all began. <laughs> Manta upstaged me even in death. He left in a beautiful way. I know we won't see each other anymore because spirits. Well, we don't have any other side that we go to. Yet, I can't help but wonder. Who was I before I became a mermaid? A poet? A traveler? A woman whose love was unrequited. I suppose it doesn't matter now. Adelaide felt like she suddenly hit a wall. The edge of the world wasn't letting her go. W what is this? It felt as though she was walking through a downpour of shattered glass. It isn't easy to materialize in the world. I compare it to being born anew. Besides, no god ever comes into the world in their full power. You have to leave many things behind. We'll push through. She gathered her strength. Peace. Okay, I'm using this cart now. She could see the land with her inner sight. What she saw wasn't the drab lines of old maps. No, she saw the land in all of its primal wild beauty, in all its purity and enormous scope, in ways unfathomable to mortals. I think I smell the familiar sea and feel the wind on my skin. The card made the transition easier. The world beckoned her, 
and she took an eager step forward. We made it back. Finally, the gates of the real world opened for the travelers. This difficult transition left its mark on Adelaide's soul. She was unprepared to carry out the deed. Oof. I don't think I'm going to last long. Wounds on Adelaide, four. Okay. Officer's uniform, I like that. A dress coat, I like that too. A triumphant uniform, interesting. Or a simple coat, I don't like that. <laughs> um, I would be fine with this one. But I'm just gonna buy the most expensive one. This is sells in the fog. You know we always go all out. <laughs> it might give me points. It might not. I don't think I don't know if there's any points left to gain at this point. Oh, that's so cute. Traveler's tricorn. Explorer's tricorn. Interesting. Or a pirate tricorn. Um. You know we were redheaded from the beginning. Maybe it's time to go back to that. Plus that hat is kind of dope. Cool. All right, much better. Simple seafarer's attire. Being a spirit is exciting, but I haven't forgotten who I am. It's time. I can feel my body turning into sea foam. Oh. Sebastian. Yes? Many years ago, you left something in my care. My heart. I can't keep it anymore. No, don't. I can't take it. Enough. Stop hiding. Stop running away from yourself in the world. I've cared for it with tenderness and painstakingly given it everything you've missed during the journey. She stretched her hand out. What? The captain's face changed. His eyes widened as though he was seeing the world for the first time. What? What is this? Whoa. You might have forgotten after all these years, but those are your feelings. Hmm, my chest is aching. It hurts. That's the point of feelings. They may hurt, but they're the only way to feel alive. Alive. <laughs> oh no! Oh, there they go and play the sad music. Guys. Her body splashed across the deck as foam. In that grim moment, the world lost another ray of light. Oh, man. That sucks. Am I... Am I crying? But he wasn't the only misty-eyed one. Salty drops fell from Adelaide's and the crew's eyes, mixing with the sea maiden's foam and so soaking into the deck planks. They couldn't even mourn her in peace. The sea rose up and monsters burst forth. I don't even, I don't have time to pick a picture. I can't even think. The bastards managed to find us. Leviathan and the Kraken, just as Davy promised. Leviathan. Oof, I don't remember any lore about a Leviathan, to be honest. I, I know the name. We all know why they're here. Everyone, in your positions. We're pushing our way through the land. Is he gonna continue to glow? <laughs> Following an impulse of his newfound feelings, he took hold of the wheel. Waves, mate. <laughs> I could never return the waves feelings before. But now it seems I can feel every plank and beam on the ship. And I swear that I can tell each and every wave that caresses this guy in the part. Sebastian's restored heart is helping him. The Kraken was the first to unleash his wrath on Riptide. The harbinger of Ragnarok raised his tentacles. So the Kraken was on the right. Oh, and now he's on the left too. All around the ship, gigantic tentacles move unpredictably, each large enough to take down an elephant. Oof. The monster dive under the galleon and cast out his deadly snares, trying to trap the vessel. But of course, he's cornering us on an open sea. We could use a whole fleet on our side. 
a fleet? <laughs> I can help with that. Someone in the sea owed her a favor. Philip Van Der Decken, you've caused my friends and me a lot of trouble. It's time you paid me back in full. Who the hell is that? <laughs> Wait a minute. I just want to write this down just for whatever sake, you know? Because I'm going to go back through and play the whole thing anyway, so... Who is that? The fog parted and at her call she emerged, the Flying Dutchman. Oh, was that his name? With her creaky rigging, half decomposed deck, and ragged sails, the nightmare ship seemed to stay afloat out of sheer spite and pushed ahead. You came after all. That means at least half of the room is about your lies. There he is. Don't think I've forgotten the oath I gave you. You gave me a second chance, and I'm not wasting it. Hey, you half deads come. It's time to work. Adelaide freed us from the curse and let us breathe again. We cannot fail her. The ship, destined to rot for eternity, moved toward the tentacles, cutting off their attempts to grasp onto the galleon. Flying Dutchman absorbed a part of the Kraken's attack. The monster's blows crushed the ship's deck, but you can't kill what's already dead. The ship reformed herself from the wreckage again and again. What is dead may never die. Hey, nasty corpses. Are you still feeding the fish? It's time to see the world again. The water hissed and seethed again, fuming. The smell of rotten carcasses filled the air. The Queen Anne's revenge, Blackbeard's notorious ship, came to Adelaide's call. There you are, my darlings. I didn't want to resort to your help, but, well, the circumstances left me no choice. Let us go. We can do it. <laughs> we can't do it. We're tired. Let us die. Oh, boy, that's kind of sad, dude. You've got to pay your debt. That includes the sentence of your past, past life. This is one job for me, and I'll let you go. I promise. I was like in Lord of the Rings, Turn of the King, when Aragorn went to go get those people who had broken those, oh, those ghosts. He was like, you know, you just fight this one last time for me and I'll let you go. We hear and obey. <laughs> the bloodthirsty souls rush straight off the deck into the water, swinging their axes, cutlasses, and sabers at the writhing tentacles. Queen Anne's Revenge was able to wound the Kraken. Now Adelaide could be rightfully called the Admiral of the Dead Fleet. The combined actions of the two ghost ships allowed the galleon to move much further. The dead man distracted the kraken. Still, the moment came and the coiling tentacles began to tighten around the galleon. Closer. Closer. Fire! Fortunately, the crew had chain shots on board, but chained together cannonballs meant to crush sturdy mass were perfect for attacking this monstrosity. The chains whistled above the sailors' heads, cutting the tentacles down one by one. Is this that 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 fwee? It sounds like a really funny, <laughs> a really funny sound effect. Oh wait, I'm not paying attention. Oh my god, the chain shots that Adelaide brought ruined the, the kraken. Okay, good. And so far, we can only use one of our weapons. We still have one more weapon, I think. I think. Yay! Yeah, they really have bad timing. We've got cannons now. Smaller tentacles were trying to snag the sailors and drag them into into the greedy, kraken's greedy beak. Beak. Interesting. Other tentacles were trying to demolish the upper decks and the biggest ones wound around the stern, trying to crush the entire ship like a walnut. What? Get off of me. A slimy tentacle snaked around the river spirit. No one dares to capture me. But the tentacle clung to her, pulling her overboard. The damsel's in distress. I'm no damsel. If I ever hear you calling a woman that word, I'll bite your tongue off, you blader. Hey, watch your mouth. Oh. The Kraken's grip nearly crushed her soul. The furious river maiden tore the monster's flesh apart, covering herself in his blood. I said, no one can touch me. You want to drag me into the water? Ha! The water is my home. The minor spirit furiously rushed into the sea, set on tearing the, the biggest piece that she could off of the Kraken. Kelpie wounded the Kraken. They shouldn't have pissed her off. The Kraken had lost a considerable number of tentacles and could no longer hold the entire galleon, but he continued trying to kill every living thing aboard her. Ship integrity 10 out of 10. Nice. 
I can't tell the ship away from him. We need to shorten his limbs. Wounds on Adelaide, four. New tentacles block the ship's path again and again. Oh, okay, so if we hadn't had all that, um, Adelaide would have been wounded more. I wonder what that means. Like, what's that adding up to? Like, it's like leaving me with just enough strength to finish off Davy Jones, maybe? Lieutenant goes back the ship's path again and again. I'll take care of this. Squatching, uh, squatching disgustingly, the Kraken tried to squirm over the gunwales and onto the deck. Everyone, we had a loss to port to starboard to stern. I don't know. Not on my watch. Tasty's harpoon. Actually, it's my watch. Don't get out of line, sailor. Sorry. I, I remember saying something about the stern earlier. I don't know. The Kraken tried to scram over the gunwales and onto the deck. Tried to squirm over the gunwales and onto the deck. Um, I can't remember which one was starboard and which one was port. I don't remember. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I don't forget already. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'm having to read you, but I need to know which way to go. Alrighty, okay. So now we're back to the start of the battle. <laughs> and I now know what is starboard and port. Once again, port left, starboard right, okay. I didn't fully understand which side was supposed to be attacking. All I know is that I saw that our right side was clear. Um, so let's see, the first time I picked stern though. So this message looks like it's gonna be the same all the time. And then we'll have to see where they are, okay. That side is clear looking, that side is not. Okay, um, to, wait, starboard was right, right? Right. Not on the line, takes a start pairing. okay. Okay, that's what we wanna see. Okay, so it's time to squatch over again. Okay, this time it's all over. So I'm gonna assume this is the stern attack again. Okay, so to stern. Ugh, this slime is disgusting. I think it suits you. <laughs> You're one joke away from losing an ear. Squatching disgustingly, a cargo tells scream over the gun rails. Okay. So this time we see him on port. Starboard is clear. So this time we're gonna go to port. Okay, so they can change. They randomize. Stay next to a smoking cannon. Point blank. I'm starting to think we need more cannons on deck. The Kraken lost most of his limbs and finally loosened his grip, and the Galleon was finally able to slip away. He'll be back soon. Well, let's hurry up and make sure we aren't here. But the heroes had no chance to catch their breath, as Leviathan, the biblical beast of prophecy, attacked. That thing is huge. The creature swam at a speed unfathomable to the sailors. His wake alone could capsize boats and crush houses if it were to hit the shore. Brace yourselves! Sebastian closed his eyes, trying to feel the behemoth wave. Sebastian was able to soften the blow. What? His hands turned the wheel as if on their own, bringing the ship around to the best angle. Wow. The water swirled as another monster emerged from the sea, however... <gasps> Hey! Yo, hello there. You? You helped me make my dream come true. I've mastered magic. Look at me. Sure, he wasn't a match in size for Leviathan, but he could certainly pass as gigantic. It's time to repay my debt, because that's what friends do. He charged into the fray of the sea monster. I told you, that crab episode was my favorite episode. <laughs> that was so funny. Charged into the fray with the sea monster, assaulting him with his huge claws. The scene could only be described as epic. Where are you going? Leaving already? No can do. I'm going to eat your heart. I want to become the size of an island, or even bigger. I've created a monster. 
<laughs> oh wow, yeah, he is a lot bigger. The Crab King distracted Leviathan. Woo, that roar. The beast eventually escaped its per uh, persistent opponent. Now it's my turn. Screeching at frequencies barely audible to the human ear. Slash, the sea warrior jumped overboard. Be careful. Hundreds of others uh, came to her call. A school of um, glistening, charming, yet deadly dangerous beauties flooded the water. Even though they couldn't bite through his skin, they clawed him in a furious rage, scratching at his eyes. He snapped at the siren, swallowing some whole, but they'd already had a taste of battle and wouldn't be stopped. Siren Tech confused Leviathan. In the end, the monster was coming right for them. He's right where we want him. How fortunate that we have some bombs. Fire! Fire from all weapons! Uh, the cannons thundered like a deafening orchestra. Such a volume of bombs could tear an entire ship apart, or in this case, inflict heavy wounds on a monster. Oh, we took a little damage though. The bombs wounded Le Leviathan. Okay. So those are the bombs. That was the last weapon that we brought. Okay. Leviathan crashed into the ship, trying to break it in half, but Riptide was still holding on. After the impact, Leviathan dived again, preparing for another round. Okay. Do we need to pay attention to size now? 9 out of 10. Where'd he go? Did we scare him off? Don't hold your breath. I'm still at 4 wounds. So apparently I could've got wounded there too if I didn't have those guys there. He's circling somewhere around here. He's hiding under water, in the fog, preparing to strike again. Keep your eyes peeled so we can strike him down in time. Okay, port left, starboard right. Okay, pay attention. Give uh, the command the moment you see the monster. Oh my god. No! Um. When I saw the button, I almost clicked it. I was like, wait, wait, wait. They told me to see it. Wait, would I see it? Leviathan shuffled his share of blows and disappeared beneath the water. Do we get him? Give the command the moment you see the monster. Oh no! Okay. slower and slower each time. The Leviathan suffered a heavy beating and slipped away to lick his wounds. After all the things Davy and his friends have done, I doubt we're gonna catch a break. Finally, the monsters were behind them, and the Galleons sailed quickly toward the co coveted land. We're going there under our own power. I didn't expect that. I thought I'd be torn apart for sure this time. No, we got you, fam. At least the crew set foot on. At last, the crew set foot on the sacred land where the story of the curse and the fog began. This fog is everywhere. I'm sick of its smell. It feels like it's been with me my whole life. You're right. Something's wrong about this place. I feel it in my gut. Mermaid, Malta. What will become of the Baron and Brigitte? They gave up everything they had. Their power? Their immortality? See, a bauble rolls against his brothers and must be dead by now. No one's looking after Katrina's souls. The souls of my ancestors. So many victims. Adelaide's mind failed her. She found herself unable to walk. She didn't want to think anymore. She collapsed to her knees like a rag doll, unable to even lift a hand. What's the matter? There's no bringing them back. No one who died will come back. It was everything for me. Everything! And so, the woman who always knew what to say when someone lost their faith in themselves, who could inspire a whole army to give their lives for her with the power of her strength and charisma, who could make everyone around her believe that there was no divide that couldn't be bridged, couldn't find any words for herself, and her light burned out. It burned out as she came to understand that she couldn't save everyone, that all of her triumphs rested on the corpses of those who had trusted her. I lied to you all. I'm not a savior. I only bring pain. I... I can't do it. You all believed in me for nothing. I... 
I can't do anything. Fog grew thicker. Oh, I really don't like this. You finally understand. I must admit, at first, I had doubts about your plan, but it's inspired. I guess I don't understand humans well enough, but I see right through them. I see all the weaknesses and vices. Nice to hear it from you, of course. I'll teach you everything. But that doesn't have to be the end, at least for you. Even though it all worked out, I didn't realize it'd be that hard, to be honest. And you're the only one to blame for all of my hardships. So here's an offer only offer mortals only get to hear once in a million years. Come to my side. Become a monster. Then and only then can you save everyone you care about. It's your last chance. So, deal? Meanwhile, the fog kept getting thickening, coalescing into ominously familiar silhouettes. If we keep standing here, something will surely eat us. But where do we go? This is our home island. We appeared here thousands of years ago with the first rituals that were dedicated to this land. Follow us to our birthplace. The three glimmering lights darted into the fog. Off we go then. Oh. Jackie swept Adelaide up and took the lead, following the spirits. The other mem members of the crew dragged themselves along. They walked a, a land long, walked a land long abandoned by humans. The steep path was covered with vines and roots, making it practically impassable. Tropical humidity, heat, and insects harassing the travelers' eyes and mouth added to the atmosphere, not to mention the increasingly acting fog. Adelaide looked over her crew over. Her friends had literally just been through hell and then some. Some had toes peeking out of their torn boots and others' hands were covered in fresh wounds and blisters. Many looked like they were on the verge of closing their eyes and immediately falling asleep, but they shook it off. Ave Maria, Gra gracia plena. His breath grew shorter with each step, but the Padre continued worrying his beads, muttering the prayer, and walking forward. I'm dying. There's no order to die. Not yet. Even the two newcomers, newcomers were keeping up. Um, they're stronger than I am. They have no magic, no powers, only hope. But even so, they're going on and won't stop until they fall. And yet somehow they look up to me, even though all of my victories are forged by their hands. Where would I be without their support, their faith in me, their skills and knowledge? They were the ones who kept me from falling and pulled me out of every close call. They defeated monsters and beasts. Santo Domingo's freedom was paid for with their blood. However strong you are, you're no one without your friends. But am I worthy of leading these people? Do I deserve it? Oh my girl, I see you're blue. Don't be. There's no reason to be yet. You don't get it. You better bet I do. I'm sorry, but... I really do get it. You can't always see the hardships others face. You grew up safe and sound. But when I was a kid, I admit I don't even know how old I was back then. No one counted in my village. But there were three, three ages. Kid, adult, and old man. Anyway, when I was that age, I got hit in the head with a rifle butt and shackled in irons along with my father. I don't think I need to tell you what was waiting for us. That's right. I didn't understand it all back then, but I knew in my gut that everything would only get worse. But you know what? I didn't give up. Fate sent me Black Bart, who took me on as crew. Of course, serving a pirate wasn't an easy job for a kid either. There are so many people in the world right now who are suffering more, and things won't get better for them. Ever. It makes your sadness seem like a like little more than a whim. Sorry. Not to sound like a weakling, but I'm going to collapse in a few steps if I don't take a break and drink some water. I agree. We can't stop now. It isn't much further to walk. In case you haven't noticed, humans have legs. Normal legs of flesh and blood. And if they don't rest for a moment, they won't walk any farther at all. 
No one sits or lies down. Otherwise, you won't get up. A quick rest, then get moving. The crew stood to prevent their weary muscles from giving in. Their ears rang, their breath tasted like blood, and their arms and legs burned from the inside. Meanwhile, the fog finally coalesced. There you are, my weaklings. Caught at last. Really, it's right to say that you couldn't escape being caught. The paradox is that if you kept walking, you dropped dead of exhaustion, but by stopping, you following into our hands. The sailors who were already straining to remain standing reached for their weapons despite knowing that they couldn't win the battle. So what's your choice? Will you take this step and save the ones who put their trust in you, or do you prefer to continue watching them die? What is he talking about? I didn't answer him. This is your last chance. The devil extended his hand, and Adelaide felt increasingly dazed and overwhelmed. The tiny creature was asking to be picked up and fawning over her. This might be the last time. She picked him up and held him to her chest. Ow. The moment she realized, a little fiend crept up and sunk his teeth into his master's neck. The mix of tenderness and adrenaline shocked Adelaide out of her stupor. That's when suddenly clicked in Adelaide's head, and it dawned on her. Hold on. If you've already won, why are you bothering with us on this island instead of conquering the world? I just like to watch you suffering. Besides, I love for you to join the conquest. No, there's something else. If you didn't need me, you could have torn apart half of the world and flung that in front of me, but you're right here. Her hand found a piece of cool cloth. It's Monta's cloak. I've remembered something. She squeezed and twisted the piece of cloak with all of her might until her fingers burned. Something moved under his skin. Monta left a souvenir for you. Oh, just something at the door. Okay, sorry, nobody. Monta left a souvenir for you, and I'm holding a part of it. She felt the venomous piece of darkness inside the devil and realized she could guide it. Where should I focus my attack? His head, his hand, his heart, his insides. His heart? <laughs> he doesn't have a heart! <laughs> um, but no, literally, does he have a heart? His insides will kind of encompass his heart, in a sense. His hand... His head. Uh, I don't really know. Let's just see what happens. I lay some the shard to roam David's belly, where it began turning the devil's guts into an indiscreet mass. This is for him. Paradox, help me, get it out. Why on earth didn't you tell me about this injury earlier when we still had time? Right now you're putting me in a very uncomfortable position. Shut up, just do it. Our rest is over, run. So the group rushed on with all their might. Oh, am I still directing it? Get them. The beast followed in their footsteps, but finally they saw the shrine. Trying to shake their pursuers off, the hero stumbled into an ancient hall covered with moss and cobwebs. We're here. This altar was where it all began. This is where the curse ends. The monster crashed into the small arch at full speed and thrashed around in the doorway, unable to push through. This is our last chance. She ran to the altar. All right, the ritual. The ritual was marriage. Garcia and Angelica got married. Thus mixing the blood of the locals and the outsiders, bringing the nations together. I'm the only descendant of the bloodline in whom the magic manifested itself. That means that me, my magic, and my blood are the key. Without thinking another second, she cut her hand, spilling her blood onto the altar stone. She gathered all of her powers to start the final ritual and free the world from the fog. And... Nothing? Not a single thread of magic moved or answered her. But why? Ha. I love this moment. The moment of disappointment. 
Okay, so it appears we didn't fully understand. If we didn't fully understand it. Episode 14, the most important day in Adelaide's life. You know, I keep wondering. Well, I just started wondering, really. I don't know why I said I keep wondering. <laughs> anyway, um, when we first started, the very first episode was a wedding. Adelaide was getting married. And there was a mysterious figure there. Didn't know who. Um, and they mentioned something about there needing to be a marriage. Like, we don't fully understand what the ritual entails. Are we have to, gonna have to get married again? Well, not again. Like, get married for real? But what would that help? Like, I can't, can't figure out what the most important day. Hmm. I don't know. The most important day. What? Why isn't working? Her heart was pounding and the pounding reverberated in her head and throat, adding chaos to her already swirling thoughts. Everything seemed so right. She was choking on bitter tears. I'm the key. I was supposed to lift the curse. The demon kept thrashing in the doorway of the ancient shrine and the walls were shaking. Those devils can't step inside as long as these walls are standing. Well, as long as these walls are standing. That's what I'm saying. Well, they won't wait stand for long. Thrice damned and blasted be. What are we gonna do? Adelaide frantically smeared her blood across the altar, grasping for even a tiny shred of magic, but to no avail. Why? Was Cortez wrong? <sighs> Wouldn't be the first time. The walls were now covered in cracks from the henchmen's attacks. Here's Davy. <laughs> Come on, you're about to realize that, that this deal is your only way out. I can already taste your despair and self-loathing. He's still offering a deal. Maybe Cortez lied to me on purpose? All right, what did he say exactly? What kind of ritual is it? A ritual of... What? I don't remember what the ritual is of! <laughs> I write stuff down. I did not write that down. I don't know what the ritual is. What episode even was that? That was the last uh, one. I think episode 11 is when we finally got there. I might have to be a, a little bit sneaky about this. Give me a second. Okay. So I rewatched my other video <laughs> to see what it is. All it said was that it was a rite of marriage. So I'm gonna assume that's the key word here. Oh, I'm trying to type. It's not letting me. Okay, here we go. Marriage? The words were burned into her mind and she would never forget them. Okay, I think I got it right. Plus three black magic. Well, I thought we were done getting points, but apparently not. Then maybe that's what we need to do? Not way back when, but like right now? Three right magic. Usually you're a buffoon, but right now you're the brightest one in the room. What? <laughs> we need to prove to this land and our ancestors that the nations made peace. That is nothing one does in haste, unless, of course, you're not too good and we're really drunk. Oh, I'm sorry, Laura and Chloe. <laughs> but it should be obvious now, right? I think there's no better time and place. An ancient shrine, ancient traditions, much better than a summer march to the altar. Right. The big man stepped toward Adelaide, encircling her in his arms. It's time for us to end this journey. Let it end well. We will begin the ritual. The stone walls crumbled and the ominous forms of the demons loomed in the breach. What are you up to? Do the spirits have a short version of the rite? We've got company. Spill your blood on the altar and mix it. Don't let them do it. Just stop them. Everyone, guard the newlyweds. This reminds me of some of the rituals from my childhood. Do you agree now and forever, forever after to bind together your lives, souls, and destinies? You're still asking? I spilt my blood. Isn't that the clearest answer? Of course. Yes. Do you agree now and forever after to bind together your lives, souls, and destinies? <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, this is not exactly traditional. 
The drops of blood came together on the stone, and the newlyweds smiled upon it, looking into each other's eyes. <laughs> we didn't walk this entire path for nothing. They kissed. I'll kill you. The moment stopped, time froze. The demonic figures with their faces twisted in anger floated in the air, and pure magic spurted from the altar like a from a spring. The power and embrace Adelaide went through her, taking her spirit to the higher realms. And not just her. Both souls were open to each other, leaving no secrets behind. They came together, healing each other's wounds. So it wasn't a dream. You weren't surprised? I have these vague memories from my childhood when I lived in the village. My grandma, I guess she was a sorceress too. That means we've got more in common than you thought. That's when he saw her from through the prism of the astral plane. Something's wrong with you. It's nothing, just reminders of past battles. I'll be fine. Wait, I want to try something. He closed his eyes and started chanting an ancient, half-forgotten incantation. Waves of energy extended from him to Adelaide. Adelaide pushed further into the interwoven streams of the universe. Is that the Fiddler's Green, the Sailor's Heaven? Yeah, it doesn't look good. It's you. Yes, it all started with me. First I was captured, then Cortez treacherously murdered me in front of my own father, who then created the curse out of desperation. So you're a distant relative of mine? I guess so. I'm Angelica's descendant. Angelica? I don't recall her. What a strange name. She was the daughter of the last shaman. I think you're talking about Ixchel, my cousin. I'm glad things worked out for her. Oh, I assumed it was her. But what happened here? I performed the ritual. I'm married now. Our blood was mixed. The gods were wise to restrict my father's curse, but the wounds of the world are too deep. The sea devil carefully prepared for his return. The ritual's power is not enough to heal these wounds. The worlds are dying. The sub lunar realm might survive, but the spirit world is done for. I can make it right. No one has that power, but I'll try to. Adelaide's spirit moved further to the place where the destruction started. To the ruins of the locker, the prison for cursed souls, the final border on the edge of the void. Really? Stop. It's actually um, a notification from this app <laughs> telling me that I need to get log on, but I already did for the day. Um, what's happening to the realms? Someone found a remedy for the curse after all. Yes, we did. Our nations are no longer at war. We managed to find unity. Too late. It took you too long, though I never hoped it would actually happen. I understand, but you gave us a chance and we... No, you don't get it. My bloodline is dead, my nation is murdered, our culture is forgotten, our civilization is lost. We were betrayed. They took the future from us and now no one gets to have it. She choked on her words. She really couldn't comprehend the full depth of his bottomless grief. You weren't the only ones to suffer. There's no excuse for what happened. And I have no right to ask for forgiveness, but millions of innocent creatures sit and suffer in the name of your grief. My mission is to protect them now, whatever it takes. Do as you please, but the wound is already so deep that no stitches can pull it back together. Your ritual chased the fog away and closed the hole, but the sea devil has left many loopholes for himself, and this wound will reopen again and again. Then I'll fix this world. On impulse, she gathered all her strength. The sorcerer. Prophecy helped Adelaide find balance. Plus 12 black magic? I was meant for this. Fate has led me to this very moment. All the generations before me, all the women in my line, have been focusing this power so that they, I can perform this deed. I'm the preordained balance of the Force. Adelaide tried to bring the entire astral plane that Davy Jones had destroyed into her consciousness. It's... It's so much. The wounds were deep and large. The entire world of spirits was barely hanging on. 
But at the same moment, Adelaide felt immense power flowing through her veins. All the Aztec magic that was never released. The entire legacy of her civilization is looking for a way out. This is the power that made me a goddess, which means I have something to sacrifice. She prepared to release her magic, all of it, and give up her immortality and divinity. She understood that all this ancient magic would be lost for good, and neither her descendants nor anyone else would ever receive it. But what is magic for if not, for, if not miracles? Everything her ancestors had been saving for centuries was ready to pour out in a single act of creation. Minus four white magic. Adelaide's wounded soul made his injuries known once more. Oh, those are the wounds! Minus four black magic. Under the strain of the immense energy, her soul began to bleed, wasting her precious reservoir of magic. Adelaide's power is being drained by her wounds. White magic 138, black magic 44. She turned to the strongest side of her soul, the path of light magic. The fair spirit's realm. Now she saw what was left of the cradle of the fair, spir uh, fair spirits and magic, and she understood their purpose and place in the universe. Mermaids, nymphs, dryads, muses, house spirits, and other creatures of light. A gift to the lonely and lost. The role is to help us, keep us safe, and guide us when all our strength is gone. They're the messengers of miracles who put a piece of their world into the hearts and minds of the best of us so the world keeps shining. It would be so sad to lose this ray of light. Adelaide gathered the light of her soul and started mending the wounds of this realm. I have enough strength. To restore everything. But I don't know if I can fix. If these are the prices, then I could even fix with black magic the other side. Not make it better, but I could fix it. I finally have enough points for something, dang it. <laughs> okay, but I way overshot, so those points could have um, been better spent had I shifted them in different places. So that's good to know. So that's like 18 plus points that I can put in the other places, and that, that would have been more than enough than what I needed. Uh-huh. It is possible to have it all. I will do it. <laughs> okay. But I have enough to restore everything as it was and even better. Most of her life, Adelaide had walked the path of light, and now she was practically the light herself. I'm not just going to restore this place to its former glory. I'll fortify it so nothing ever destroys it again. Giving almost all of her stuff away, she took to forming the home of the light anew. Ah, oh, I feel almost like I'm melting, but it's worth it. Wow, the airy castle was astonishing in its glory. That isn't enough. A house is pointless if, if it isn't a home. There's more, even more plants than before. Unable to stop, she used her immense kindness to recall all the spirits who died protecting the world from Davy Jones back into the realm. <sighs> Whoa, I've also never seen her make that face either. But yeah, I guess this was like to be born anew. What? Where? Why am I here? Throws herself into the mermaid's arms. I did it, I did it! You, did you recreate me? thought it was impossible. I thought it would be, but the rest of the Aztec magic is flowing through my veins for a reason. Adelaide admired the fruits of her labor for a while until she realized it was time to move on. There's another side to the realm. The Dark Spirit's Realm. The remains of the locker fumed and, defin uh, and a deafening silence reigned over the place that had protected the world from the void. Adelaide suddenly knew the truth. She knew why the world needed darkness. All the creatures living in the shadows, bringing us nightmares and scaring us are warriors and sentinels. They're the nemesis of who, who punish those who have lost their path. They're the judges who test us, casting the unworthy away. They're the sentinels who keep greater evils from entering the world. It would be unfair to abandon them now, for they help people grow better and stronger. Adelaide gathered all the cool, writhing darkness inside her soul. It's not a lot. <laughs> But I can restore the dead man's locker, but I don't know if I have enough to restore Manta, though. And unlike the other choices, I don't think it's possible to have both that much white magic and that much dark magic. I think this is the only one where you 
seriously have to choose. But I have enough to restore the dead man's locker. Adelaide's soul had enough darkness in it to restore the walls of the locker. I guess the walls should be stronger now, but I'll do everything I can. Half of her divine powers went to restoring the strong gold, stronghold. It's harder than it looks, but I can make it. The citadel came into place, and the ancient prison was once again ready to perform its functions. I wonder what it would look like if you could fully restore it. Like, would it not have any of uh, like the drapes over it or something? I don't know. But I guess we can see it. Can we bring Monta back or no? Ready to perform its functions. I wish this master could see it. Oh no, I can't. Oh God. That sucks. I can't think of any possible way that you can do both of those. But if there is a way, I'm going to find it. <sighs> her strength gave out. She stopped being a goddess the moment she sacrificed both her divinity and all the magic her ancestral nation had ever had. Neither she nor the world itself retained even a tiny speck of the ancient and mysterious yet majestic sorcery. <sighs> And as she wasn't a goddess or a spirit or even a sorceress anymore, she was unceremoniously unceremon kicked out of to her home realm, forever stripping her of the possibility of seeing the wonders of the other side in her lifetime. Oh. She's breathing again. What? What happened? Where's Davy Jones and the others? You'll never believe it. They just went poof. Poof? The dummy here means that the moment you got married, you drop dead and the monsters vanished into the fog. The fog? That's right. And the fog got blown away by a breeze. So we did it. Adelaide separated the world from the void again. And the monsters from a different plane had nothing left to hold on to. They no longer belonged in the realm. The putrid smell of the fog was gone. And every tiny leaf could be easily seen under the bright sun. Adelaide stretched her hand with the ring out toward the sun. She focused and tried to evoke a tiny sparkle of magic. Nope, I'm not a sorceress anymore. She couldn't help but laugh merrily. It's all finally come to an end. It took a long while for them to return home. Meanwhile, the city was growing and improving as best it could. The people of Santo Domingo realized they were guests of the land. They started to learn about the native cultures and restore their relationships with their neighbors, absorbing their wisdom and building ancient traditions into their own way of life. Adelaide's par parents drank their fair share of Valerian root tea while listening to her recount her last journey. And eventually, the decision was made to have a new, official wedding to legitimize her relationship and introduce her beloved to the world. And so we have finally reached Epilogue, the best day. Oh my god, I've never finished one of these stories before! Because I haven't finished Moonborn or Shell of the Saint 4. I can't remember what else finished. Queens of the, um, Queen in 30 Days, even though I heard that in the badly. <laughs> oh my god, it's been so long! Gosh, I can't believe it. Dude, we're finally doing it. Elegant wedding dress. Revealing wedding dress. Oh, this is more of my style. I like that Magnificent wedding gown. That's pretty. I like the other one <laughs> uh, Poignant uh, wedding gown. Oh, that's pretty too though Royal wedding gown. Gee <laughs> Holy cow Or oh, exciting wedding gown. Oh wait I like that too. Huh. Oh, bridal gown. The one we saw in the beginning. Um, I'm in between revealing one. But now I look at it again, I like the other one better, I think. No, 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 no. I think that's the one. But I mean, we're just for it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, exciting wedding gown. 105 gems. Gone. 
Oh man. Okay. Bridal veil. Oh, her hair is pretty under that. I like that. That's cute. A wedding veil. Wow. I like that. A pretty or a pretty veil. That's cute too. It does show up for shoulders. But nah, fam. We extra. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> also, I like the hair underneath. That's really cool. Let's put this one. <laughs> okay. Oh, and <Amber>, okay. <laughs> they just draining me for rip for gems now. They all here tripping. Magnificent bouquet. Or a simple bouquet. I don't think it matters too much. I kind of like this one. Honestly, I feel like I like the simple one though. Save myself some gems. <laughs> no. I don't know. Oh, that's pretty. Ah. Fine. <laughs> I'm so excited for today. It will be the very best. Oh gosh, it's from the beginning, dude! Oh, mother. Good morning. I wanted to see you before things begin. Me too. Shouldn't you be organizing the ceremony? I've seen to it, and everything is in order. Ready for your perfect day? Then you came to check on me. Of course we did. Uh, last time we asked our mom, our dad, uh, I think he said everything was expensive. I can't remember what he said. I'm asking. Well, I must confess, I don't remember much. All the night before and well into the morning, I was out celebrating with friends. My last day of freedom. <laughs> I felt like death warmed over walking up to the altar. But after the project finished while talking and I lifted the veil, at that moment I realized that my life had begun anew. Darling. Oh, the bell. Shall we? Oh my god. The believer's here. <laughs> it's better than before. And no fog better come bursting in. <laughs> the little creature was stretching his paws eagerly toward Adelaide. He'd grown used to a comfortable life in the town and gained some weight. Don't worry. I'll be back soon. <laughs> it's so weird that they're still here. Like, what does he eat? I think he eats normal stuff too. Yeah, because he usually feeds on magic, but there's no magic left. Now look who's talking. The god had recently taken a liking to sitting in Adelaide's arms. You're behaving like kids. <laughs> Adelaide cut up with her pets for a bit, then gathered herself and took her first steps toward a new life. It's beautiful. It's absolutely perfect. Finally, she appreciates our efforts. Oh, I remember this. I never thought I would see the day. Adeline exhaled decisively and took a step forward. The benches were full of guests. Many came for their ceremony from afar. There were even guests from other colonies. To think I used to be a tailor, and now I'm the mayor of a whole colony, and all thanks to her. Eh, she didn't really help that much. We were the ones who restored and built everything anew. <laughs> Don't be rude. I like that dress, though. But she laid the foundations. And then who supported you? You, of course, my love. <laughs> <laughs> I love the purple. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Oh, yeah. Beautiful weather. Beautiful day. For such a special occasion, Bobby rallied and finally uh, bought Margaret from the brothel. Honey, this is so cute. A real aristocratic wedding. You bet. <laughs> I love the purple, dude! <laughs> he was very pleased with himself, especially when the madam discovered which crew Bobby sailed with, refused to take a single peso from him, and locked herself in her room trembling. <laughs> I'm totally, I'm awesome. What a good place to sum it all up. I think I'm done with piracy. I'll stay here for a couple of years and work on my memoirs. What a pity that a beauty like her is no longer eligible. <laughs> on the other hand, meh. There are many beautiful women around. 
The chaplain anxiously slipped his rosary through his fingers, bead by bead. And none of your mischief today, instead of magic. Mother? And ah, a bride-to-be. Isn't she beautiful? The doors opened and Adelaide walked down the aisle. Hand in hand with her father to the solo music. Words I can't describe. Just a few steps from the beginning of a new life. A simple, happy life. So at last, the father let his daughter walk the final steps on her own. Ah, the day has finally come. I think we did a great job of raising our girl. Yes, I'm proud of her, but I'm ashamed of how we acted. Don't remind me. At last, Adelaide stood by the altar. <laughs> oh my god! I swear, I'm gonna do a cry. <laughs> the chaplain read through the necessary and extremely lengthy prayers eventually reaching the essence of the ceremony. Do you take Adelaide as your lawful wife to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and cherish until death do you part? Yes. Do you take Najai Gandhi, little Jackie, as your lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and health, until love and cherish until death do you part? Yes. I hereby pronounce you husband and wife. You may now kiss your bride. <laughs> Her new life started with that kiss, but a very important task remained, throwing the bouquet. Um, toss. <laughs> it flew into the crowd, petals fluttering around it. Out of the way, you bastards. <laughs> the short seller worked his elbows to push other distinguished attendees aside, launching himself toward the bouquet. It ended up right in his hands. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a sign? <laughs> it might be. Oh, poor Bobby. You have no idea what you're getting into. <laughs> Three old friends were watching the scene unfold. Beautiful. The story that began with us is finally over. Oh, Ponce. Our only story, only our story is over. There are many more to come. New stories for new generations. I'm sorry, friends. I'm late. I don't know if you can forgive me, but we are all creations of our time. You have things to be ashamed of, but all is well that ends well. Don't worry. Come here. The three friends came together in an embrace. Oh my god. Afterward, Riptide, the now renowned galleon, served for many years to come, participating in countless adventures and battles. I hope one day I'll meet someone who can hear my stories. You might ask, what happened to the newlyweds? Jackie had been dreaming about a home on shore for a while. As soon as he entered his new role, he undertook massive renovations, trying to make Santo Domingo as magnificent as possible. He seemed to have an aura of warmth and protection around him. The life he shared with Adelaide was serene. Later, a new generation emerged to discover new horizons of island life and new golden seas. Sebastian and Lorenza found their happiness on the open sea. Once bound by their separate shackles of destiny, they now enjoyed freedom together. Eventually, Clive tamed Ivy's temper, and she began ruling the colony alongside him. Many years later, she finally gathered her resolve and wrote a letter to her father. Chris and William, an explosive couple, their endless energy propelled them on surprisingly bold and daring adventures all over the new world. The chaplain's first order of business was returning to a familiar distant shore and the tribe that lived there. He was infuriated by the misunderstanding surrounding his religion and was determined to right this wrong. The siren followed him, ready to protect him from any threats that might arise. Tom Good quit his life of piracy and dedicated himself to science, for the generations learned most of what they know about the mythical sea and creatures from his treaties. The eternally optimistic Jacques Lumiere couldn't stay on the island for long, and one day he woke up hungover as hell and embarked on a bizarre adventure only he understood. He hasn't been seen since. On the dust, once the dust had settled, Jorge received a signed order from the king. The conspirators were punished, and Jorge was reinstated. The knight lowered his crimson flag, and Jorge de Sandoval returned to his home in Spain. Monsters of every stripe were stranded throughout the seas by the breach. Kai wasted no time, embarking on epic hunts that would be sung of in myths and legends for generations to come. 
Tatuga had united once to defend against the Crown's fleet. On that day, the captains realized their carefree life was over. Tortuga grew into an island state of its own that was never captured and maintained its independence for centuries. Santo Domingo became a strong power that survived all the ordeals, catastrophes, and great wars. It stands strong to this day. Adelaide managed to bring balance to the spirit realm. Of course, their power in our world weakened, but try looking closely at the flowing water and dark shadows. Perhaps you'll be lucky enough to see something more. Wait a minute. I think it's all over. Of course, I'm weak as ever, but I've been poisoned in this world for so long. Now there's a part of me and many of the people treading this world. Not this year or the next, but I will find my way back into the world again. But that's a story for future generations. What? Don't do that! <laughs> Time went on and on and on. The age of the black flag abated. abated. It appeared that pirates were fading from human memory. The time of freedom and courage was over. The time of discoveries and conquest was over. Until a story began that made people remember. The Admiral Bosom. Will any kind friend inform a poor blind man who has lost the precious sight of his eyes in the, in the gracious defense of his native country England and God bless King George. Where or in what part of this country he may now be? <laughs> the Romance Club team congratulate you on completing this story. Developed by Project Manager Vlad C. Screenwriter Alexander Z. Technical Design Anatoly G. Artists Catherine B, Marina K, Christina K, Valeria K, K Catherine K, Lillian I, Natalia M. Artists Catherine M, Victor M, Oleg M, Julia M, Igor M, Alexandra M, Anna N. Artists Peter P, Dorian P, Dimitri R, Simeon T, Dimitri T, Victor T, Natalia G. Programming Vlad C and Elena C. Translation and editing Sv Svetlana M, Elena C, Slav Slavomir P, Irina P, M. <laughs> Sound Dimitri M. See you in our next stories. They drop you down to zero, dude. <gasps> it's over. Oh man. The story is finished. The Romance Club team would like to congratulate you on finishing the last chapter. Thank you for staying with us. Have a fun time planning other stories of our club. Oh my god. So when I go back to the back... Hold on. Keep going. It says completed. All the seasons. Dude. What a freaking journey, dude. That was crazy. I, I like that ending. I enjoyed that. I madly sleep that bad guy in there. What the heck is up with that? <laughs> But dude, oh man, who even was that? That was that was a different one from anyone we've seen before, I think. Or was he in the first episode? I might have to go back and watch. But dude, that's crazy. Oh, that was that was it. I started with this, this story, you know, so it's like, yeah, that that hit me. I really enjoyed that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I'm probably gonna um. Before I post these, I'm probably going to replay season five, maybe season four too, if I need to, um, for points wise. So I can show you all the parts like the, where we needed a bunch of strength and a bunch of diplomacy and show you all of that. Uh, do the white magic. Wait, no, I got all the white magic stuff. I think I needed more pirate rep. Yeah. To get the, fire, the pirate rep points because like I said, I have 18 points from the white magic that I could have spent doing putting up elsewhere. Yeah. To have enough. And then eventually I'm gonna go ahead and do a black magic run as well, dating Sebastian to see how that story ends if you're dating him. Um, yeah, and then I think, I, yeah, I think that would be it. So 
But anyway, um, thank you guys so, so much for watching and going on this journey of Cells in the Fog with me. It's been a long, long ride, but that's cool. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Um, if you like, enjoyed this video, go ahead and show the like button some love. Subscribe to see me do more of this stuff, complete other stories like Moonborn and such. And I will see you next time. Bye.